Hi guys, I would like to share about my Walkera V450 D03 helicopter today. The modifications I've done to it, which is actually basically only the servos. Other than that, most of it is still stock. The stock rotor head, stock gyro, stock tail servo, tail boom, stock tail boom, stock tail assembly. Most of it is still original, stock tail motor, stock ESC. Other than that, uh, what else? Battery, I moved it. Original position was actually up here, but I positioned it here because if I position it here, I find that I can move the battery slightly forward to move the center of gravity slightly forward because this heli, for some reason, it was slightly tail heavy out of the box. But maybe it's just because of my battery. This is a 2200 milliamp hour battery instead of the original 2600 milliamp hour battery the original battery died on me uh, i bought this helicopter second hand so when i got it the battery was already dead so i did get this okay back to the servos as you guys know if you're watching this video most probably you already know the original v450 d03 the original servos are very bad they die for no reason sometimes for my, for, for my case, I had already two servos died on me. One of them died, the left cyclic servo died after a crash, which uh, wasn't that bad actually, the crash, but it died. The second time it happened, the rear servo died for no reason at all. I was playing with it on my table, just testing the range of motion, and then suddenly it just decided to die. Which is actually quite good actually, I mean luckily it did not die in flight, if not I'll have another crash heli. <laughs> Do not want to crash this heli again, cost quite a lot of money. Okay, so these are the Emax ES09MD servos, I got it from Banggood, but then I found out Gearbest is actually selling it slightly cheaper. The dimensions are almost the same, slightly longer, slightly taller. But the width, the width, the width looks exactly the same as the original servos. Also, to fit these servos, you need the ball links from the original servos. So, if you want to change servos, if your original servo died, do not throw it away. You need the ball links. Also, I heard that the V450 D03, I heard the ball link sizes are actually different than other helis, although I'm not too sure about that. Correct me if I'm wrong. So as you can see, I chose the second hole from the outside, but then even with this hole selected, the distance from here to the center is actually slightly further compared to the original servo. But if I chose the inside one, then it would be too near. So this hole is the best compromise actually. After using, using this servo at this particular hole, I had to change my pitch curve setting. Previously, original setting I put a 66 value of 60 in my transmitter to give me 11 degrees of collective pitch range. But now I have to put to 52 degree, 52, sorry, I have to put 52 in my transmitter to get me the same 11 degrees of motion. Also, I have to dial down the server extension slightly. If not, it reacts slightly because it reacts slightly faster than the original. But then I got it dialed down to how I like to fly it. So far I've put 6 packs in it, so I fly it 6 times after I use this servo, after I installed this servo, sorry. And it performs very well. There's a lot of torque in it. You see I'm pressing quite hard. These servos have a higher torque rating than the original servos. Also these servos feature 2 ball bearings and full metal gears. So, so before I bought this server, I actually asked around in the forums, uh, RC groups, mini helis. They said this server have a very good reputation, so I trusted them and bought it. No regret so far. Also, the the server actually binds slightly on the full negative pitch and full aileron. I'm not too worried about that. Just let me show you. Okay, positive, negative, full negative pitch, full aileron. You see, it just binds just slightly. I'm not too worried about that because I don't think I'll be flying like that. I don't think I'll be flying with the sticks in that position for long. 
to actually cause problems. Also, for some reason, after I changed it to these servos, the tail tail wag is gone. As you can see, I'm still using the original servo, the original tail servo. But before this, when I was using the original cyclic servos, the tail used to wag like this, just slightly. No matter what gain setting I use, I try 75, I try 60, 50, 30 percent. There was still this slight tail wag for some reason. I check all the mechanical linkages, all were good. But then after I changed to these Emac cyclic servos, the tail wag was gone. The now currently the tail hole is very good. It just sticks solidly in place. I use a gyro gain setting of 60 in my transmitter, 60% gyro gain. Hmm, so yeah. So far so far so good. You have to, as I say, you have to file down to install this, you have to file down the top and bottom of the chassis slightly. I think the difference is what 0 0.5 millimeters. So if you have a Dremel, then it'll be much better. Uh, unless if you doesn't if you don't have one, you can just use a conventional file and do it the old-fashioned way. You also have to cut off the the ears or the what kind of, the the flange. You have to cut it off else it can't fit. It's also slightly more forward because as I said it's slightly longer. For the rear cyclic servo, I do I did not have to modify anything in it. It just fits perfectly in. The holes were mostly aligned, but as I said, it fits in without any modifications at all. Now let's look at the other side. Still using the stock ESC. Stock ESC. And here you can see the installation of the left hand cyclic servo. Very fit, very snug. It looks like it came with this heli actually, if you didn't notice the slight deviation of the control links. It's not exactly perpendicular, but it's close enough to not cause any trouble. I file it down so that it fit, so that the servo fits just nice. It's just, it actually fits with a slight interference fit. Slight interference fit, because uh, since you have to cut off the flange, there is actually no flange holding it down to prevent it from moving forward or backwards. So I give it interference fit. So the friction of the servo to the chassis is actually holding it down quite well. Because I don't really trust these screws in holding its position. You see the blade. Change the blade. It's a cheap blade. I think it's worth what? Eight US dollar, seven US dollar. I think it's a composite blade, not too sure. You can see it's crashed before. Fix the tip with some super glue and tissue paper. Works very well. Fold it down. Also had a, had a separation along the leading edge and trailing edge. Use super glue as well. After I checked the balance, everything was good and it flies well. Also, I painted the tip with marker pen one side so I can check the tracking. I find this easier than using tape because it won't affect the balance at all. So yes, this is my heli. Also, yeah, just one last thing. I painted my canopy gold. It's using rubber paint. Uh, this color is very striking while flying. Very easy to spot. And since this I use rubber paint, it's very flexible as well. It flexes along with the shape. Flexes along with the canopy so it doesn't crack. Other than that, I think there's nothing much else to say about this heli. Flies well now, especially with these holes. Very good. Ah, also, I just would like to add uh, I had encountered before where the heli crashed for, um, upon takeoff for no reason. Because apparently, I moved the heli slightly while it was initializing while the gyro was initializing so yeah for me now before every every flight i actually 